Chapter 2 Measurement of Length, Volume, Time and Mass Least Count of a Measuring Instrument The measurement of a physical quantity such as length, mass, time, current, etc. requires an instrument. For example, a meter scale of vernier calipers is used for length, a balance for mass, a watch for time, a thermometer for temperature and an ammeter for current. Each instrument has a definite limit for correct measurement which is expressed in terms of its least count. The least count of an instrument is the smallest measurement that can be taken accurately with it. A measuring instrument is provided with a graduated scale for measurement and the least count is the value of one smallest division on its scale. For example, the least count of a meter rule is the value of its one division which is one-tenth of a centimeter or one millimeter. The least count of a stopwatch is 0 0.5 second if there are 10 divisions between 0 and 5 second mark. The least count of an ammeter having 5 divisions between the marks 0 and 1 ampere is 0 0.2 ampere. Smaller the least count of an instrument, more accurate is the measurement made by using it. Measurement of length with meter scale Description a meter scale is a plastic or wooden scale of length 1 meter, which is graduated in centimeter. The meter rule used in laboratory has subdivisions in millimeter, such that there are 10 divisions in each length of 1 centimeter. A meter scale has its zero mark at one end and hundredth centimeter mark at the other end. Least count the value of one small division on meter scale is one millimeter. Therefore, a meter scale can be used to measure a length accurately up to one millimeter. Thus, its least count is one millimeter or 0 0.1 centimeter. Procedure To measure length, the meter scale must be placed with its markings close and along the length of the object, such that the zero mark on scale coincides with one end of the object. The reading of the marking on scale at the other end of the object then gives the length of object. Precautions While measuring the length of an object with a meter scale, the following three precautions should be observed. One, generally the end of the meter scale marked zero is damaged due to wear and tear. In such a case, one should measure the length from the graduation other than zero. The correct length is then obtained by subtracting the marking observed at one end from that observed at the other end. 2. Generally, the scale is thick, so to avoid parallax error arising due to it, the eye must be kept vertically above the end of object and the corresponding graduation in the line of sight should be read. Figure illustrates that the correct length of the rod AB is 4.2 cm minus 2 cm is equal to 2.2 cm when the eye is kept exactly vertical above both the ends A and B. But if the eye is not kept exactly vertical above the end B, the NB appears to be coinciding either 4.1 cm or 4.3 cm mark, which results in wrong observation. 3. In case the end of object lies between the two marks on the scale, the mark nearer to the end of object is read without estimating the fraction between the two marks. In figure, the end A is read 2 cm while the end B is read 3.2 cm, not 3.3 cm. Thus, the length of the rod AB using meter scale is 3.2 minus 2 
is equal to 1.2 cm. Vernier calipers A vernier calipers is also called the slide calipers. It is used to measure the length of a rod, the diameter of a sphere, the internal and external diameters of a hollow cylinder, the depth of a small beaker or bottle, etc. A. Description A vernier calipers is shown in figure. It consists of a long and thin steel strip provided with jaw J1 at one end. On the strip, a scale is graduated with the value of one division equal to one millimeter. This is the main scale. Another small steel strip provided with a jaw J2 at its end can slide over the main scale strip. This strip also has a scale graduated with 10 divisions on it, the length of which is equal to 9 mm. It is called the vernier scale. For more precise measurement, the vernier scale can have 20, 25 or 50 divisions marked on it and the total length of vernier divisions will be equal to the length of one division less, that is 19, 24 or 49 divisions respectively on the main scale. The vernier scale which slides over the main scale can be fixed at any position on the main scale with the help of a screw S. Both jaws are parallel to each other and are projected on either side of the main scale. The lower jaws are called the outside jaws and they are used to measure the length of a rod diameter of a sphere or external diameter of a cylinder. The upper jaws are called the inside jaws which are used to measure the internal diameter of a hollow cylinder or pipe. A vernier calipers is also provided with a thin and long strip T attached to the vernier scale strip at the back of the main scale strip. It slides with the vernier scale. When jaws J1 and J2 are in contact, the end of the strip T touches the end of the main scale strip. The strip T is used to measure the depth of a small beaker or bottle. If you want to see all the chapters in this format, then call us on the description of the number. Vernier Calipers Main Parts and Their Functions the table below represents the main parts of a vernier calipers with their functions. 1. Outside jaws Function is to measure length of a rod, diameter of a sphere, external diameter of a hollow cylinder. 2. Inside jaws Used to measure the internal diameter of a hollow cylinder or pipe. Three. Strip to measure depth of a beaker or a bottle. 4. Main scale to measure length correct up to 1 mm. 5. Vernier scale it helps to measure length correct up to 0 0.1 mm. B. Least count of vernier calipers. The least count of vernier calipers is equal to the difference between the values of one main scale division and one vernier scale division. It is calculated by using the equation 2, that is, LC is equal to value of one main scale division x upon total number of divisions on vernier n. C. Zero error in vernier calipers. On bringing the movable jaw J2 in contact with the fixed jaw J1, the zero mark of the vernier scale should coincide with the zero mark on the main scale. If it is so, the vernier is said to be free from zero error. In this condition, the end of strip T also touches the end of the main scale strip. But sometimes there is a mechanical error in the vernier calipers due to which the zero mark of the vernier scale does not coincide with the zero mark of the main scale when the two jaws J1 and J2 are in contact. It is then said to have 
zero error. In such a case, the zero error is equal to the distance between the zero mark on the main scale and the zero mark of the vernier scale. It is necessary to account for this error for a correct or true measurement from this instrument. Kinds of zero error. The zero error is of the following two kinds. First, positive zero error and second, negative zero error. First, positive zero error. On bringing the two jaws together, if zero mark of the vernier scale is on the right side of zero mark of the main scale, the zero error is said to be positive. It is equal to the distance between the zero mark of the vernier scale from the zero mark of the main scale. Figure shows the two scales of a vernier calipers with positive zero error. To find this error, we note the division of the vernier scale which coincides with any division of the main scale. The number of this vernier division when multiplied by the least count of the vernier gives the zero error. For example, for the scales shown in figure, the least count is 0 0.01 cm and the sixth division of vernier scale coincides with the main scale division. Therefore, zero error is equal to plus 6 into least count which equals plus 6 into 0 0.01 cm which equals plus 0 0.06 cm. Second, negative zero error. On bringing the two jaws together, if zero mark of the vernier scale is to the left of zero mark of the main scale, the zero error is said to be negative. Figure shows the two scales of a vernier calipers with negative zero error. The negative zero error is equal to the distance between the zero mark of the main scale from the zero mark of the vernier scale. To find this error, that is difference between the zeros on the two scales, we note that division of the vernier scale which coincides with any division of the main scale. The number of this vernier division is subtracted from the total number of divisions on the vernier scale and then the difference is multiplied by the least count. In figure, the least count is 0 0.01 cm and the sixth division of the vernier scale coincides with a certain division of the main scale. The total number of divisions on vernier are 10. Therefore, zero error is equal to minus 10 minus 6 into least count, which equals minus 4 into 0 0.01 centimeters, which equals 0 0.04 centimeter. D. Correction due to zero error, that is correct measurement with the vernier calipers having a zero error. To get the correct reading, the zero error with its proper sign is always subtracted from the observed reading. That is, correct reading is equal to observed reading minus zero error with sign. Let this be equation 4. Thus, the positive zero error gets subtracted from the observed reading while the negative zero error gets added to the observed reading. If you want to see all the chapters in this format, then call us in the description. Mein diye gai number par call kare. E. Measurement of length of an object with the vernier calipers. Procedure. First, find the least count and zero error of the vernier calipers. Second, Move the jaw J2 away from the jaw J1 and place the object to be measured between the jaws J1 and J2. Move the jaw J2 towards the jaw J1 till it touches the object. Tighten the screw S to fix the vernier scale in its position. Third, note the main scale reading. Fourth, note that division P on vernier scale which coincides with any division of the main scale. Multiply this vernier division P with the least count. This is the vernier scale reading. That is, vernier scale reading is equal to P into least count. 
Fifth, add the vernier scale reading to the main scale reading. This gives the observed length. Sixth, from the observed length, subtract the zero error, if any, with its proper sign to obtain the true measurement of the length of the given object. Thus, observed length is equal to main scale reading plus vernier division P coinciding with any division on the main scale into least count. True length is equal to observed length minus zero error with sign. Let this be equation 5. Example. Figure illustrates how to read a vernier calipers. In figure, the least count of vernier calipers is equal to 0 0.01 cm. Main scale reading is equal to 5.3 cm. Sixth division of vernier scale coincides with the division on main scale, that is P is equal to 6. Therefore, vernier scale reading is equal to 6 into 0 0.01, which equals 0 0.06 centimeters. Hence, observed reading is equal to main scale reading plus vernier scale reading, which equals 5.3 centimeter plus 0 0.06 centimeter, which equals 5.36 centimeter. If the vernier calipers is free from zero error, then true reading is equal to 5.36 cm. Principle of a screw An ordinary screw has threads on it at equal intervals of length. On rotating the head of the screw, it moves linearly along its axis. The linear distance which the screw moves in one round is equal to the distance between the two consecutive threads on it. This distance is called the pitch of the screw. Thus, the pitch of a screw is the distance moved by the screw along its axis in one complete rotation of its head. Generally, the pitch of a screw is 1 mm or 0 0.5 mm. To use the linear movement of a screw, for measuring small lengths, the length of the screw is graduated along its circumference. Normally, it has 50 or 100 equal divisions on it. This is called the circular or head scale, least count of a screw. If pitch of a screw is 1 mm and it has 100 divisions on its head, then on rotation of 100 divisions, of its circular scale, the pointed end of the screw moves by a distance equal to 1 mm. Hence, the distance moved by the screw along its axis on rotation of one division of the circular scale will be 1 mm upon 100, which equals 0 0.01 mm, which equals 0 0.001 cm. This is the least distance which can be measured by the movement of screw and is therefore called its least count. Thus, the least count of a screw is the distance moved by it in rotating the circular scale by one division. The least count of a screw can be obtained by dividing the pitch of the screw by the total number of divisions on its circular scale. That is, least count is equal to Pitch of screw upon total number of divisions on circular scale. Let this be equation 6. If you want to see all the chapters in this format, then call us in the description of the number. For more educational videos, subscribe to our channel Home Revise.